investors to purchase the bonds was by convincing them that higher ranked tranches bonds posed almost no risk. First, they built the bonds in accordance with complex mathematical models that indicated that there was a very small chance that large chunks of the loans going into any single pool would default at the same time. Their mathematicians hired from top universities ran analyses that assured them that if they mixed in mortgages from different parts of the country with different characteristics, there would almost certainly always be enough cash to pay out the higher ranking bonds. No housing crisis since the Great Depression had been national in scope. So as long as they came up with the right mix of loans, the bond payments would be safe. The second and perhaps most important step in marketing the bonds as safe investments was convincing the credit rating agencies to bestow high ratings on the bonds. With 5,000 subprime mortgages potentially stuffed into a single bond and no loan level detail offered to investors, it was impossible for investors to research and analyze all of the underlying loans to make sure that their investments were safe. Credit rating agencies helped solve that problem. Now there is another part in this book by the former uh, Special Inspector General of the Troubled Asset Relief Program where he discusses that after TARP was approved, the first thing that was discussed was giving individuals a chance to repair their credit, to reassess their credit, and then to work with those people to understand what they were doing, what they were capable of, what they had to offer. And then once they were recharacterized that would actually provide a solid foundation of a basis for concepts of credit and creditability. Different people have different capacities and if you're in a situation where you've compelled an entire swath of the population into a delusion that they owed on loans when what it really was was that they were slated for participation in capital outlays in accordance with the federal budgeting process that then was used to underwrite treasury notes and bonds that were then issued in conjunction with other kinds of investment paradigms that would be involved with assessing the marketability or the credibility of a mortgage that could then be packaged into a mortgage-backed security. Then you have a different situation than what they tried to get away with. What I just demonstrated is that given motivation, each individual with a little bit of appropriate consultation can do the same thing for themselves. Now, do we have to figure out how to pay taxes so that we're able to recirculate that through what is necessary as an appropriation? Yes, but we also need to stop letting these individuals and their corporate persons get away with defrauding us as part of our capacity to actively and conscientiously engage legally in ordinary political process. Is it presumptuous of me to think that an ordinary political process can also include something like what I just did? I don't think so at all. I think that that is an example of how you shouldn't have tried to cheapen or depreciate your own people so that you can make us available for a discounted sale to people in other countries that you won't allow to do the same for their own constituencies and people so that we're able to value each other at a equivocation and in consideration of standards that we're proud to uphold. It's very simple. And every day you refuse to acknowledge this possibility. I mean, point proven. And I'm just one. I'm just one woman.